In this picture, we are viewing a multiple slit diffraction pattern in greater magnification. Moreover, for this exposure, we are using 300 slits. Notice how sharp and narrow the central white fringe has become. There's something else in this picture which is new and different. The new effect is not very obvious in the first order. But we do see, barely, some vertical dark lines within the diffraction spectra. They are more pronounced in the higher orders. These dark lines are Fraunhofer lines. Remember, our 300 slit system is being irradiated with sunlight. In other words, diffraction by a sufficiently large number of slits resolves spectral lines, just like a prism. Our series of experiments involving more and more slits is similar to one Fraunhofer performed around the year 1820. He probably didn't expect these dark lines to appear, but his powers of observation and of judgment made him concentrate on these lines. So, let's look at the spectrum again. It doesn't show as many dark lines as were produced by the prism spectroscope, which we used at the start of the film. Could this be a matter of bringing into play more and more slits spaced more and more closely together? This is one of Fraunhofer's own multiple slits. By the way, one calls a system of multiple slits a diffraction grating. He made some of these out of wires laid at precise spacings parallel to each other. He machined finely threaded screws. Then he cemented wires into each successive thread. His finest wire grating, which has unfortunately been lost, had almost 300 wires laid down at 320 per inch. He built a ruling engine and cut gratings on flat glass and on gold leaf cemented to glass like this one. Now, light of given wavelength lambda, normally incident on a grating, is diffracted into the nth order through an angle theta sub n according to this relation. Here d is the distance from slit to neighboring slit, center to center. Fraunhofer confirmed this relation experimentally with the dark lines as reference marks. Thus, if the spacing d and the angle theta sub n are known, a value for lambda can be calculated. For any one dark line in the grating spectrum of sunlight, Fraunhofer determined the diffraction angles with this spectrometer. To measure the grating spacings, he built a microscope. The grating was placed on the microscope stage, which can travel precisely measurable distances on a precision micrometer screw. Fraunhofer's finest grating was ruled on flat glass with a diamond point. It had a spacing D of 0 0.303311 centimeter. That means he ruled upon glass at the rate of 7,671 lines per inch. With it, he determined the wavelengths corresponding to several prominent Fraunhofer lines to four significant figures. We put together a grating spectrometer to take a look at the solar spectrum in high dispersion. The slit in the center is vertical. The lens on the right serves as a collimator. 30,000 vertical lines per inch are ruled onto the surface of this grating. It's a flat reflection grating, two inches square. Such dense rulings weren't accomplished until the 20th century. By turning the grating, different colors of the spectrum of the sun will reach the camera. With such a fine grating, one can see many more dark lines than Fraunhofer could. Toward the end of the 19th century, the American Henry Rowland made gratings which had about 20,000 lines per inch. With these, Rowland determined the wavelengths of many thousands of Fraunhofer lines. 
these two dark lines in the yellow are only six angstrom units apart in wavelength. They belong together as a doublet spectral line and were traced to the element sodium about 30 years after Fraunhofer's death. Only then did the dark lines in the spectrum of the sun become understood as an absorption spectrum. But even so, Fraunhofer had made brilliant use of them in his lifetime. He had found a method for determining their wavelengths with precision. And that method works just as well for any other spectral line. With this film, we honor the founder of grating spectroscopy.